here. All right. So where we left off last time, we didn't get very far. Um, we skipped this whole first part, and I know, Shaista, you wanted me to go through some of this because you had questions, but I felt kind of weird just um, <laughs> just paraphrasing what Dr. Powell had said. So I thought I'd wait until you got here, and then you could ask me real questions. And if you had them, if you didn't have any more, we would move on. Otherwise, we can go through them. Um. The one, the question was uh, on the introduction and the uh, A, what are fractions? What are fractions? Can you guys see the paper? That, in yeah, Zoom? I can see. Okay. Yeah. Just. And then the second paragraph in general, we can say that fractions are numbers that represent relations between two measurable quantities. Okay, that I understand, but the second sentence. The relationship is a multiplicative comparison. So, between two quantities. So that what we're saying and what Gatenio teaches is that this relationship is a relationship of multiplication. We are not doing parts to wholes. This is a multiplication. So I can say if I have, let me pull up my handy dandy little rods here. So let's do. Let me go to. And then we'll share again, just so that everybody knows what we're talking about. Um, the background here with our this sucks a lot of resources. I sorry, my mouse is currently stuck. There's nothing I can do with until the after change. We just think of having hold on. Okay. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. So what we're saying is when we say it's a multiplicative relationship, what we mean is if we have seven, probably seven isn't a good one, because it's a fraction. Let's do eight and two. So what, we'll do, what we can say about that relationship between the eight and the two is that there are four twos and eight, right? So we can say two times four is eight. There's two of the four kind in eight, or there's four of the two kind in eight, however you want to do it. Two of the four kind or four of the two kind? Either one. But we can also say then that um, two is one fourth of eight or four is one half of eight. So we have both of these going on. And what we're saying is that the inverse of um, multiplication is not division. It's actually fractions. So... 8 is 4 times as big as 2, and it's 2 times as big as 4. So it's not a division, it's a, it's a relationship of multiplication. And so when you see, um, and it helps us to understand, because when we multiply fractions, we see that there's, there's a lot of confusion that happens, because kids multiply. So we, people talk about it in terms of multiplication, in terms of um, how many twos or how many groups of two. Well, now we have a problem when it comes to fractions. How do you understand groups of one-fourth of one-eighth? How do you understand that? If we talk about it in terms of groups, but if we talk about it in terms of uh, a measurement or a, a relationship of two quantities as a, multiple, as a, as a relationship of multiplication, um, as a comparison between two lengths. This is, gets confusing, but the more you play with it, you'll get it. Then, then that's what he's talking about. That eight is four times as long as two, and two is one-fourth as long as eight. Or one... F so we can multiply two and get by four and get eight. Or we can... Right? 
or we can multiply four times two and get eight. Either one of these. Okay. Are you, does that make sense for real? Or are you saying, okay, just cause? <laughs> it makes sense when I'm looking at the blocks. Yeah, it does make sense. Thanks. See that language show up when, um, when you hit chapter four in the first textbook. So he'll say that's exactly how Catenio introduces the fractions. So he, the division is not as a as a division symbol is not introduced. Fractions are introduced way before division is, and it's introduced um, as part of fractions or after fractions and understanding of fractions. So you'll see addition, subtraction, multiplication, and fractions, and that's what you see first. And then later on, you had they add division. All right, anything else? And I can go back to I think it makes, it'll help you also as you start working through the exercises, the tasks. This is all reinforced when you do the tasks in order. Okay. I think that was just, that was the main question that I had. Okay. Um, everything else is okay. Okay, well last time I think we ended, Jeanette, you were here. Oh, she's gone. So she's obviously doing her wilderness thing. Um, I think we ended at task two. Lacey, you were here. Andrew, you were here. I think we did. Yeah, we did. Okay, so we are on task three, and our task three says, find pairs of lengths where one is two-thirds the length of the other. Find other pairs of lengths where one is two-thirds the length of the other. So what we're looking for is all the lengths where one is two-thirds the length of the other. And then we're going to do notice and wonder. Particularly notice. So what are, I, oh, let me go back to my new share. Go over here. OK. So how would we six do to this? Nine. Six to nine. OK, so before we start throwing them out, six to nine is one. How can we do this in a way so when you first start out, you'll have a kid and they'll throw out six to nine. But let's say that we've worked on this and we want to do this in an organized way to make sure that we have them all. How can we do this and know that we have all the pairs for sure? Stairs. Staircase. We need to go staircase. So what, what do we start out with? Um. Okay, so one is two thirds of the other, right? Yep. So what would it mean? So two and six. Two and six. Okay, but is one a third of some other rod? So can we start out with white? Yes. So can we do? Can we do two Hold on. And a Hold on. The, what? Okay. So what do we need to find down? One is one third or two thirds of the other? Oh, yes, two thirds. Yes, so we can we do one? So that's the question. Can we start oh, with so one? Oh, so we start with one. Okay, no. Can we? No. Why we can don't we have not? An, we don't have a, how do you call it? Um, uh, integer. Um, integer. Uh, integer, okay. A number that is, you know, that fits the pair. So one is say. not two thirds of some other number. Okay. We don't have right. a rod for that is what you're saying. Okay, so yes. we can't use one. So then can we use two? Yeah, we can do red and lime. Red and green. Red and green. All right, can we do three? Um, 
and and now it's blue. It's, it's the same thirds. thing as one. So we have a problem. We don't have a we don't have a whole number that three is two thirds of. Is what you're saying? Yeah. All right. Oh uh, no. Mm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you're sure. At this point, yeah. With what okay. I know. We can Let's always say, come back if you're wrong. Okay. Okay. So what about four? Yeah, it's four and six. Well, so we have we're calling these four and six, but we can do purple. We're gonna call it purple and dark okay. green. Okay. Okay. What about yellow? Can we do yellow? No. Right? No. Okay. <laughs> Lacey, did you ask a question? <laughs> like, right? <laughs> um, can we do green? Dark green? Uh, yeah. Yes. With the mm -hmm. uh, nine, right? Mm -hmm. Or the blue, because how do you know it's right. nine? Right, but blue. Mm -hmm. Okay, and mm -hmm. then can we do the black? No. No. Can't do black. Um, can we do brown? Yeah, orange and red, right? Mm -hmm. There's a pattern. Orange. Mm -hmm. So we call orange and red orange. Red orange. So we can do orange and tan or brown. And we can keep going and building from here. But what do we notice? So what are the things that we notice by this two thirds thing? It's doubling. Like the first one is a, is a red and a light green, and the next one is actually two reds at the top and two light greens at the bottom. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> so, okay. So the one is one red and, and one light green, and the next one is two reds and two light greens so equivalent right so what's the next one going to be it's not always doubling it's well, uh, it doubling? right so the next it's one is, is the next one is three times so so it's three reds right you can fit mm -hmm. three of them there and, and it's three greens. So what do you think the next one will be? Uh, it will be like four, I guess, but I'm four. sure. Yeah, it's four. So the next is four reds and four light greens. And the next one is five reds and five <laughs> light greens. Uh, so Rachel, what do you... Rachel asks, so you did a substitution. Theoretically, there is another one in there. There's another what? One what? Yes. Rachel, did you hear that? I guess I you. I, no, sorry, just my observation when you overlaid the other ones. Oh, okay. Well, that's fine. I'm just wanting to know another one what. So we could put it up here, you mean? We're just going to define what we mean by one. Like, because we could do, yeah. So each equivalent fraction, these all represent two thirds, and each, oh, sorry. All we've done is each time we've added one more two thirds. So we started out with two thirds, and then we added another two thirds, then we added another two thirds, and then we added another two thirds, and those are all equivalent fractions. 
Do we see what happened? So, right? You can do this yourself if you have them. Just lay them right on top. Rachel says, I was surprised to see you using the other rods. I would have just gone to the same colors. This is very interesting. Well, we want to find um, all the rod pairs. So if we're looking for rod pairs, if we want to build the next one and see what they would be, but we're asking the kids to find all the rod pairs. So... So do you see what we did each time? We start out with one two-thirds, and the next one down we added another two-thirds, and another two-thirds, and another two-thirds. But now, this is, they're not even on top of each other anymore. This one's further away. So what is, I notice, here's what I notice, that in the first one, the difference is one. And the next group, the difference is two between the first pair and the second pair, or the first rod and the second rod. And in the third pair, the difference is three. And in the fourth pair, the difference is four. So if I find the 10th pair, what should the difference in the rods be? That's really cool, I never noticed that. So it should be five. The 10th pair. Oh, the 10th um, pair. Rachel ten, says, right? I would have started this way. Why did you start with the other curls? Then difference is a white X10. Then she says 10. Yes. So why did I start with the pairs? Is that what she's asking? Why do we start with the pairs of rods? I think she's writing now. So Why not red and green the whole way? It was obvious. Well, because what we're looking for is the tasks that we were given in this particular thing here. It says find all the pairs. So it's obvious to task you. Task three. Yeah, task three. It says find other pairs of lengths where two-thirds is the length of the other. Where two-thirds the length. Where one is two-thirds the length of the other. So um, you Now she got it, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That was our task. So if you have this, you're giving it to the kids, and then they can see how it's built. You can do it the other way, too. You can do this however you want. Whatever. Some kids will start out this way and find it, and some kids, if they've been playing with it, will do it exactly the way that Rachel wants to do it. It doesn't really matter, honestly, how you do it. Because um, you can then lay these rods on top either way. But if we're going to follow... Go ahead. Uh, should you let your child do it however they want, or should you tell them let's go in order and and then tell them to do it this way? Um, well, so if the task, if the task that they're given, we want them to be able to complete the task. So if the task that they're given is to find the pairs of rods, right? If that's what they're they're doing, um, there's a couple of things going on. One, we want them to actually follow directions. Okay, right? We want to teach them to do that. Two, um, if you have a kid that finds two-thirds, they might know, like Andrea did, six and nine. So I wanted to redirect and say, how would we find all of them? How would we know that we found all of them? So let's just start out from the very beginning. And starting out from the very beginning makes them think through each and every pair. Um, but you can, it depends on the child. So like for Philip, um, I might let him do it haphazardly um, two years ago, but now I would make him do it in order to make sure that we knew and how would we know. So if I said, to, so as Rachel was saying, how would we know if we had them all? Rachel's right in saying that, well, it's easy. You just lay out new two thirds and then find the rods that make two, you know, find out what those are equivalent to. That's a super easy way to do it. But if you notice, we didn't do that. Like, that never, when I asked how would we do it, so I said, can we start out with one? We had to think about, is there another one? So here we are. So we don't want to take those opportunities away from the kids. We want them to think. So it doesn't matter as long as, for me, as long as they're getting to find, how they find them isn't important. Um, 
that's an important process to go through. So I'm not going to tell them how to do it. How Andrea does it is going to be different than I would do it or different than you would do it. Um, that they find them is the important thing. Um, that they get there, that they actually meet the challenge, but the, the whole process of going through that, there's all kinds of things that they're going to be learning while they're going through the process, however they do it. So I don't want to go and just tell them, hey, here's an easy way to do it. They'll figure that out. They'll figure it out. Rachel says that was skillfully done. Nice. <clears throat> yeah, and um, I really like this way because, yeah, I did find the six and the nine, but I had troubles with the others. Once you lay them down and, ask, you know, asking me, do we have something related to one? And we took one after the other, eh, things, you know, became clearer and clearer. And I could understand and see, not just use my memory and the formulas and whatever was easier for me in my old way right mm -hmm. yeah we want them to think it through that's what mm -hmm. we're after so um if if your kids wanted to if they figured out that they could just lay down the two uh, you know a red and a light green and they figured that out that they could just keep adding them because that's exactly what you're doing and you kind of want to get them there um I mean, that's kind of where you want to, but if they don't start there, don't tell them about it. You want to, you kind of want to lead them there. So like what happens mm -hmm. if. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, okay. So we noticed that the difference is one, then two, then three, then four, then five. And then we can then easily predict, we can make predictions and say the 10th, the tenth combination would be um, the difference would be ten. Now, can we make from here a, a, a guess about if we have if we convert these into units and we say white equals one? So we would say the red is two thirds, the red green is two thirds, the next one is four sixths, and then the next one is uh, six ninths, and then the next one is eight twelfths. Can we make a prediction without doing the multiple, you know, without going through all of them, what will the tenth one be? And how would we do that? Oh, it's, it's multiple of two uh, over multiple of three. Huh? Something like that? Um, Two, four, six, eight. Ten, it would be like that, I guess. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. So what is the yeah. second one? The first one is two times three, and the next one is two times six. So, or two times, the next one is, um, Two times three times two, right? What is the next one? Two times three times, so two, well not two times three, so we have two thirds times two gets us four six. Yeah. Two thirds times what gets us six three. nines? So gets us, so the next one is two times three, or two thirds times three, then what, how do we get to eight twelfths? Times four. So then you two thirds start. times four fourths, right? Yeah. So then, um, what would the so if two thirds is one, and four six is two, six ninths is three, eight twelfths is four. What will the tenth one be? 20. Oh, you said the tenth. Sorry. Okay. Um, twenty over thirty. Twenty over thirty. No, it would be twenty twenty two over thirty three. The tenth one will be if the fourth one is eight twelfths, two thirds. 
times four fourths. Oh, you oh, okay. So what is the yeah. tenth one? Okay, yeah. Like two thirds times ten tenths mm -hmm. will be twenty over thirty. Yeah. So what is going to be the fifteenth one? Thirty over forty-five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Rachel said, but you can answer in actual rod colors, which is cool, and times oh, n times w over three times n. Hang on, sorry, there is an error in mine. Just going to get my doodle pen. <laughs> Thank you. This is funny. <laughs> Reading the chat is funny. <laughs> okay. she, uh, she's showing the camera, but I don't see it, Rachel. You have to. Oh, okay. Uh, Sonia, do you see Rachel's uh -huh. video? Okay. I have to see what I. You have to go see what she's saying. <laughs> her doodle pen <laughs> yeah so so you might be able to so you're going to look at that and then that is the next step so we're looking at all the different steps rachel we've talked about um and you haven't been here but we're talking about how do we take things for children who are small right little kids and then we're going to differentiate these lessons all the way for kids who are older and that is a great book because what we've done is um, we figured this out and then what Rachel did was so we figured out then Rachel um, generalized it so she took it straight to algebra which is great um, probably not gonna work for a, a second grader maybe not mine might might not mine won't do that but um, but I think there probably are you know some of Lacey's kids can probably do that but mine won't um, so you just have to gauge your kid, your child, but we're looking at um, what can we rename and um, what can we predict, making predictions, getting them to rename things, getting them to make predictions. So the changing these and finding all the sizes, right, all the rod combinations is um, renaming. That's what we're doing. We're just renaming. Um, and then we're going to make predictions because that gets us to think about how this all fits together. And then... Um, what Rachel did then was make a generalization. And that's usually like the last step. And that's as your kids are really able to make abstract, to do things abstractly. All right. Um, <laughs> that's where said, Union wants to go every time. She wants to go to the generalizations where everybody's like, wait, I don't know how that happens. <laughs> uh, what did she so say? Yeah, she said, my 14-year-old is working with me and I'm role-playing here. He's on the other computer. My 4-year-old, which is the rods. My 10-year-old can. This is very cool. Thanks. Yeah, and, and everybody's doing the same lesson. Everyone's doing the same thing, which is really, you just have to take it one step further for each grade level. Um, so we're going to go back up here to the new share, and I'm going to go on to, where's my book? And I think that's important because I know a couple of kids that the first time they do this task to exercise, they're not going to see the, 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 the growing that's happening and how it's growing the first time. It, it might take you asking several questions and coming mm -hmm. back to it another day, you know. Yeah. That, that's, well, that's important. We've been doing, so just for us, we've been doing fractions for – a year working on solidly working on fractions and Philip can multiply them in his head and divide them in his head and he's you know a spastic seven-year-old um, but <clears throat> we didn't start working on growing them maybe a month ago so right after the last conference is when we started really like growing fractions and these also are um, these are also scaling activities as well 
So this is, you know, the, when you start doing this, you're, this is spilling over into a lot of areas of math. So you're doing, you're growing fractions, but you're also understanding scaling. And these are, uh, and they're all multiplicative as you can begin to understand scaling is a, a multiplication activity. That's exactly what scaling is. And that's exactly what we're doing with the fractions is we're growing them and you can see why we don't want to talk about fractions or multiplication as groups of something because this is what fract we're, we're scaling these fractions and it does take, I mean, these are things that have to get into a child and you're playing with them a lot. So I agree with Lacey. I wouldn't do this. I mean, it's been a year and we're finally starting to scale the fractions, not just play around with them and, and understand what, <clears throat> what brown is of, of orange or what dark green is of, of blue. I mean, was it six months ago? I think he finally figured out that he could do 147 to 47, and that's one, and 183rd of 183, and that's one. And that was a huge, exciting moment for him. That was like his head blew off when that was, we could just do one of some number, some other big number. And this is so exciting, and we could throw these into our compositions. And then they showed up everywhere, one one millionth of a million. And it's one, and then we could use these big numbers. So, um, yeah, you don't want to rush by their aha moments at all. I don't. Anyway, uh, let's go back to, does anybody have this up? so that I don't have to keep switching, that you could read them. I'll read it. So task two is look at all the pairs you found. Oh, what do we notice about them? What is the same and what's different among the pair lengths? Can you bring it up some? Hold on, yeah, I will go and do this. Share screen. All right, do you see it? Can you guys see the paper? Yes. Yeah. I can. So it says, for pairs of lengths where the first is one-fourth the length of the second, you may have found that in addition to the pair, the pair red and one tan, you have these four pairs, two whites. Is there a pair of rods which only rods of those two can... Okay, so he wants to do, he wants us to do basically in part B, do what we already did, which was um, line them up and see how they grow. So part B of this task, uh, so we found all the lengths and then part B was to, to do this, to find the pairs, the single pair that you could use to make all the other pairs. So we already did that. So he's going to force that. So what he's called, what, what he's doing there is forcing the awareness. He's not going to wait for the child. He's not waiting for the child to discover that. He's going to have them do it and then force that awareness on them. And then now consider the pairs of lengths you found where one is two-thirds the length of the other. Is there a pair of rods for which only... Uh, okay, Rachel, so page 13. Yeah, page 13. All the 13, first. task three. Okay, so what do your noticings mean? So we noticed, I noticed, um, so here, what we can do. So what do we notice? So he's gonna he's spending a lot more time on notice and wonder here, which is really important. So um, Lacey talked about, um, she found the one pair, and then we did the, um, we guessed, or we made predictions about what would be the 10th and the 15th pair and what would you, how would you, um, so multiplying by two, two halves or three thirds or four fourths or five fifths gives you another, uh, another pair in the series. And we notice that the difference is, the difference grows by one. The difference between each set grows by one. Anything else you notice? I 
I notice that um, all the numerators are divisible by 2. And all mm -hmm. the denominators, the first one is divisible by only 3, but the second one is divisible by 2 and 3. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the numerators, are, yeah, the denominators are all divisible by three, but every other one is also divisible by two. Um, I notice that all the numerators are even, and all the denominators are odd even, odd even, odd even, odd even. Anything I else? Think, I, I think Andrea mentioned that all the numerators are, um, are when you count in twos. And then the denominators are threes. Yes. Um, I don't know what it's called. Divisible. Is that what you mean? No, not divisible. Um, Mult I said multiples of two the and multiples, and of, multiples two, of three. Multiples. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Anything else? All right, I'm going to go on to the next question then. So, he asks us, what do your noticings mean to you? Can you say it again? What do your noticings mean to you? What does it mean to you? Here's what I noticed. I noticed this. So if you go here, if you go. You're invaded, Sonia. I was. So here's what I thought about this summer. So if we go to the 10th, to the 10th one, which is 30, 20 over 30, right? Yeah. And I know the difference is 10, right? Yeah. If the, so if I know the difference grows by one each time, so if I hit 20 over 30, I know that it was two thirds and the difference is 10, then I know that that was multiplied by 10. If I go to, um, so if I'm looking at, say, Yuyin said, well, I just know because we, they, it was drilled into her head, um, the least common multiple or the least whatever, the least common Least common, greatest common factor. Um, anyway, if we're looking at so you don't know these, you don't know what to multiply by, but I know that if you look at the pattern in the beginning, and I have some insane number here, right, like um, that would represent two thirds. Let's do two thirds is kind of hard because it's pretty easy. Um, but I'm at 40 over 60, the difference is 20. So in order to get back, all I, I need to do is divide by 20, right? If I divide the 20, the 40 by, by, by 20, I'm going to get 2, and the 60 by 20, I'm going to get 3. And I can get back to my original 1 because I know what the pattern is to begin with. So all I have to do is divide by the difference, and I'm going to get back here. So if you look at the pattern in the very beginning, two-thirds, and you see how the pattern grows, I know that at the, I know at the tenth one or the twentieth one that the difference is 20, and I can divide by 20 and get back to two-thirds, yeah. which I thought was really cool. I never thought of it like that. That is really cool. Okay. Any questions so far? I'm just reading the script here. Okay. That's what it says. Any questions so far? Anything that you wonder about? That was my wondering this summer. It's like, how, okay, I know this is related to something. I know that this difference here that grows and there's a pattern means something. All right. Task five, finding pairs of lengths where one is five-thirds the length of the other. Find pairs of lengths where one is five-thirds the length of the other. 
Well, that one's easy. I'm going to go to my new share and back to my, oh wait, I'm on my desktop. All right. Can you see my lot rods? Yes. Are you leaving out task four? Yeah, we're going to go to task four, four now. So we got to find five thirds. Task four is, uh, is task four not three halves? What? Do you have the task? It, I have three halves. What do you have? Oh, wait, here. Well, I'm down at task five. I don't know where you guys are. Golly. <laughs> I'm saying four, but I'm on five. <laughs> okay, so we're doing three halves the length of the other. Find pairs of lengths where one is three halves the length of the other. So what are the two rods that represent three halves? What do you mean three halves? Well, if you divide a number in half, you need to have three of those. Three halves. So we would have one length that is one and a half the length of the other. Right? That's three halves. Yeah. Right. Light green over red. Do we see how we did that? Lacey, why did you choose that as your first one? Well, because I'm really simple, and I'm just like, what's one half in my mind? And I would say one half is white over red. And then I would say, okay, well, what would be three halves? Then I would say three whites over red. And then I just came to light green over red. Okay. So, so I try I'll to break it how, down. I'll tell you how I would do it. Rachel the said green is has three. to be an even number. The three. Mm -hmm. Um. Three represents three thirds, or three of them, and, ha and the, the, the red could be, is two. So I have, if it's white, so I have three of the two kind, of the half kind, right? So the, I would just go with the three and the two because it's three halves. Yeah. Like five sevens would just be a five and a seven. Three halves would be three and two. Nine fifths would be a nine and a five. Does that make sense to you? Nine of the fifths kind. If you play with fractions, you see this. You'll figure this out. You don't have to even spend time. So four halves, five halves would be five. There we go, a five and a two. All right, so that's three halves. All right, so what's the next question? Uh, look at all the, oh, we have to find, look at all the pairs of lengths. So we have to find pairs that are the same. So based on what we did before, how could we easily find these? Would you just do the staircase thing where you would just take, I don't know, four, and then ask yourself, are there three halves in four, and what is it? And I, well, the, the last time, so let's think about this. What did we do the last time? So we're going to do this based on our prior knowledge. So we noticed that with... Um, Two thirds, right? So the next one, we what did we do? We added another, we scaled it. We added another, right? And then, so this is going more back towards what Rachel said. We just added another two thirds. Each time we wanted a new fraction, we just found another two thirds. So based on what we did before, how could we easily find the next ones? We just keep adding one more light green and one more red just in the inverse, right? So let's find out if that works.
We can find out if we're right. So what goes over the top of that? Um, dark green and purple. So without laying out the green and the red, what would the next one be? Blue over uh, dark green. Oh, hold on. I'm going to maybe have to go answer my phone. And the next one will be... Hold on. I think I'm going to have to go answer my phone. <laughs> And it would have been eight over. It would have been the, the tan rod, not the blue. Yeah. Rod. I see that as I sit down. Right, right. You're busy. <laughs> I was like, do I have to answer this? This could be somebody's parent. Oh, my gosh. All right. So we see, if I look here, that... Um, two-thirds, and then three-halves. What do you notice? If we... There's a difference of one. So we have a difference of one, and the first one, and then what? And then the second one is a difference of two, and then the third one is a difference of three. So it grows just like the other one. I noticed this time that the tops are multiples of three and the bottoms are multiples of two. So the numerators are multiples of three, the denominators are multiples of two. So if I wanted to find, say, since it grows by one, what would the tenth one, if we if white equals one, what would the tenth one in this series be? The last time it was 20 over 30, but this time what would it be? Fifty over twenty. Thirty over twenty. Anything else you notice? I noticed pretty much what I noticed is the everything that we noticed about the last one, only it's flipped. So this one, it's two thirds. The last one was two thirds. This time it's three halves. 
The last one was for the next one was four six, but this time it's six fourths. And the last one it was six ninths, and this one it's nine six, and twelve eighths, and um, fifteen. It'll be fifteen tenths. So it's just everything. Um, it's just the inverse of the last one. Let me go see what our little thingy says. So it's going to ask us to find the same pair of rods, um, to find a pair of rods that we can use to make all of them. Um, and then what do your noticings mean to you? And do you have any questions so far? So it's the same exact questions. And he's going to keep going through every, so task five is basically the same thing, only we're going to do five thirds. Now that will be interesting. And I wonder, let's do how, let's look and see. Are you guys ready to go on to five thirds or do you still have questions about three halves? I'm okay to carry on. Rachel has. <laughs> what? As, as an aside, my son is tinkering with the display app thing you are using to show us. Can you print what? Can you print uh. what they do on screen? Oh, can you print what they do on screen? Um. The only thing that I do is I have this fantastic little snipping tool here. I don't know if you can see it, which allows me to go over here and take this and then save it as an image. Or you can hit print screen every time you want to do it, but it doesn't actually save everything. Now, I don't know. There's other ones besides this. I don't know. Green, sh green shot. I use green shot. Okay. It's an, an app with, with which you can select whatever you want on the screen in many different ways. So. Yeah, this came with my computer, so I, it's called Snipping Tool. So that's what I use. No. All right. So let's do, what is it? We're doing five-thirds. Is that right? Let me go back and look. Uh, five thirds. Five and then three. So that's how I would find five thirds. Five of the one third kind. And there's three thirds and three, so this is super easy. So we have five thirds. What is our next one going to be? Without, so we know based on what we did before. Ten sixths. Ten sixths. And the next one. Hmm. Uh. Fifteen ninths, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna have to shut a door. See, he's not even in here, and he's really loud. <laughs> Rachel says, "Well, she said um, she'll chat later. Uh, says she can set him off and." Um, it's cool, and she's glad, uh, it's also that I finally got my technology to catch up. This is great. <laughs> I think Rachel is really excited today. <laughs> she's like a kid. <laughs> okay, so 15 ninths. All right, so what do we notice? 
about this one. So what do we notice? We got five thirds. I notice a difference of two in the first one, four in the second one, six and six. So I'm guessing the next one will have a difference of eight, and then the one after that will have a difference of 10. I'm just guessing, but I think I'm right based on the patterns we've seen so far. Rachel says, it is not so easy to generalize. Actually, this is good brain workout. It is. It's not easy to, it is. You have to really think about it and um, what it is you're trying to, to do to be able to generalize. Okay, so anything else you notice? I notice the tops are all multiples of five, so the numerators are multiples of five. Denominators are all multiples of three. Um, anything else? So the first one's five thirds, the next one is ten six, then um, every other one, every other denominator is, um, hmm. How do I say it? Is a multiple of two and three uh, is divided by both two and three. It's divisible. Is divisible. Oh, okay, it's divisible by two and three. By both two and three. Okay. Right, because we have. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm guessing every third numerator will be divisible by three. Because mm -hmm. those are divisible by five. Right. Because of the 15. Mm -hmm. If you laid these out and you looked at patterns, you would find all kinds of things. If you just laid out the fractional patterns, like you could do this kind and look for patterns all day. Like there's a ton in here. Okay, so I have a weird question because I'm trying to figure out my own thinking. So we were kind of working on something similar to this. And if I were to say like five thirds of 30 is what? And for me to figure it out, I would simply just say, well, what's one third of, of 30? And then I would say 10. And then I would just say five times 10 is 50. But... I don't know how, why I do it that way. Maybe I would do the same. That's why I had troubles in the beginning, and I still do. Yeah. I still do while looking at the rods. So, so say that again. You said five thirtieths or five or one third so, of. So if I was just, so if I wanted to figure out what is five thirds of 30, I would ask myself what is one third of 30, and I would say 10, and then I would just say five times 10, is 50 and then so 5 thirds of 30th of 30 is 50. Does that make sense? That's yeah. What I would have done as well. <laughs> but I don't know why I would do it that way. I because just, it's easier. Because you find out the 10%, because 10% of anything is easy to figure out. So it's, you, you go back to your percentage training when you were a kid. Right? And so to find one of anything, so to find one third of something is super, super easy. One third of 30 is really easy. It's 10. So in any situation that you have, and that's what you're training your kids to do, it doesn't matter what is the easiest way for me to figure out. It's the easiest way for you to figure out. I would have done the same thing. 
what's one third of 30 and multiply it times five? Same thing, because it's easy. But there are 20 ways you could figure this out. It, I would say that I would have never figured it out that way without the rods, but it's like that foundational number of like, go back to what you know. Well, what is one fifth of something and what is one third of something? That's much easier to find, but it's just, I don't know. It seems like it's easy to go back to, to what you already know for sure. And that's a, and if you looked at um, the training this summer, um, that's what Dr. Powell did every time somebody was struggling, is to take them back to where they had a sure footing and then move from there. So I think that's a very, I mean, I think that's, that's how Gitanio teaches. You take and, and, you, and you make new discoveries based on old information. Um, Rachel's, uh, Rachel's answer was, your way is computational. You have been trained to find one part. We want the kids to visualize it rather than have to make the step. Not just easier, you have been told, find one part and then scale it up. Yeah, I'm not, the computate, the reason you, um, right, so the reason you would do it computationally, um, is so that you can do it um, fast, right? That's the whole point of the algorithms, is so that people can um, compute quickly, um, and everybody's doing the same thing, and we can see where the mistakes are, and it makes it easy to teach, and then you can find things. That doesn't mean it's the fastest way for you, but to do this and to lay out the rods, to do it is, that's a, you, you're doing this to help them understand what's going on and to make connections. But at some point, even Gitanio introduces, not, in, not now, much, much later on, he would introduce the algorithms for finding this stuff. And there's nothing wrong with using an algorithm once you know what's actually happening with the math. Um, but my way of finding it is probably going to be very different than your way of finding it. I think of like um, adding large numbers I never do the borrow and carry, ever. I don't, when I add large numbers, when I subtract numbers, I don't, well, borrow and carry, I don't use any of that stuff. There's much faster ways to do it, but my way of, of adding two numbers, two large numbers together may be completely different than your way of adding two large numbers together, and both of them are just fine. It's however your brain works. Whatever works for you, and that's what Catenio is after, is making it, However your brain works, whatever makes sense to you, that's the way you should do it. But you should understand what's happening with the math, that you're scaling every single time. So for me, Ben is about visualization and about visualizing, and, and continuous to some degree. Um, I don't think to the same degree that Mortensen is. I think he's mostly after having you understand what's happening and then you figuring out the fastest way for you. Um, I'm going to go now because it's almost 10 o'clock. <laughs> I'm really tired. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, I need to get going too. And I don't want to make these too much longer than an hour because nobody, you start losing, you can't focus after an hour. Um, so I, are we going to be working through the whole, the whole uh, well, I don't know if we want to do the whole thing. We don't need to do, I don't know that we need to do every one of them, but some people wanted me to do every single problem. But I think some of them can be worked. Once you get it, you can work through them on your own and do notice and wonder with them. Okay. I think I'm going to do that until maybe class 10 and then, then I task 11, then it's, then it's a bit different. Task, let me go to task 11 and read it. And we can maybe start there next week. Okay, we've probably added an echo because we've just managed to get our mic going. Okay, so task 11. Without physically manipulating the pin, describe a pair of rods where one is two sevenths the length of the other. How would you use your pair? 
to create other pairs of trains of rods where one train is two sevenths the length of the other. So what are we going to do? So we, we've, we've touched the rods in phase one. So the first 10 tasks, we're touching and we're manipulating the rods. Nothing has changed when we move from 10 to 11. The only thing we're doing differently is doing it without actually touching the rods. You're moving away from the rods and doing this mentally. Can you still look at the rods without? Like, yes, you can look at the rods, but you can't actually touch them. Okay. And then... He's going to do this, and you don't actually get to even see the rods. So that's the next phase of working. So task 18 we already did. Well, task 18C, we basically just did this. Okay, I think I missed the one. I think I, I definitely missed that one. 18C? Well, that's where we just, where we actually in. multiplied. Like I said, what's the tenth one? What's the tenth fraction in this series? Oh, exactly. or, that's exactly that's exactly what task 18C is. Oh, so now we're going to formalize, and you can see what's going on. So that's um, where we multiplied the fractions times two halves, three thirds, four fourths, five fifths. And then he asks you, "What's the seventh fraction?" See, I do this naturally. I I'm sorry. We're going ahead. <laughs> Rachel, we can hear you. You can talk. Because... Oh yes, but now there's a problem. There's a problem if you hear me, and my my kids will get noisy. It's just breakfast time. <laughs> no, it's it's fine. I think. Oh, that's all right. And then, sorry, the other one was on task nine and ten. It's talking about the unit rod. What rod can you choose as a unit rod to find two rods where one rod is one half of the unit rod? What is it? What is the unit rod? So I we think it's mentioned here in the front. He did talk about it. So we talked about this oh, before. Right. So we have um, in the this unit rod is the one on the top. It is no. The unit rod is always your denominator. It's the one that you're using to measure with. So it tells you what kind. So, so it's below. It's not the top one. It's the oh, other right. one. The denominator. The one okay. under is the yeah. under one. So it tells you, the, the top one tells you, the numerator tells you how many of what kind, and the numerator tells you of what kind we're talking about. Now this gets a little confusing because I was raised and Yuyin was raised, and I don't know, I think probably Lacey was raised the same way. When we talked about the unit rod, we're talking, we're talking about what the unit is. We always wanted to know what are one. What's, what's the one thing we're talking about when it comes to fractions? What thing is the one? So one whole what? Are we yeah. talking about a fraction of it? I want to know the same exact thing. Yeah, and so there's that comes to be a problem when you're talking about multiplying fractions. So so if you look at like um, one fourth times one third, there's two units in there. You've got a unit of a fourth and a unit of a third. So there's two units there. And so um, this starts to get like a little tricky. So what I would like to do, so instead of using the what's your one, um, is just stick with the measuring rod. <clears throat> Can you explain that? So the measuring rod is the thing that you're, that's your, that's all it means. So a unit is some kind of unit of measure. So I have one apple and apples are my unit of measure. That's the what kind, I'm the kind thing I'm talking about. I have one of some kind of something. I have one of the apple kind. If I have a third, I have one of the third kinds. Mm -hmm. If I have one twentieth or five twentieths, I have five of the twentieth kind. If yeah. I'm multiplying three fifths and one by one fourth, okay, right? Three fifths of one fourth. I'm taking three fifths of the one quarter, three of the fifth kind by one of the fourth kind. So you have two different units there. Yeah. Does that make sense? I think I skipped part of it with the wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> I think if you go to task one, then that explains about the unit rod and the measuring rod. 
Yes. I, I, I will have to go back again because obviously I'm not retaining the text. I, would, I did want to know um, just how, if, if I've got my 14-year-old working with me and I'm working slowly through the task with my younger ones, how do I know that he's actually at task 19 in his language when I'm working on task four it, without knowing the book back? Like, how do I just know that that's going to be, um, I don't have to hold him back. How do, how do I know that? Um, I think as, um, well, Lacey, how do you do? So you have a 14-year-old, so it starts to get a little bit trickier. And I think your 14-year-old probably, you can start all the tasks together, right? And then you stick with this one particular task and extend it. I think that's what you're doing. Instead of working and letting him go through task 14, if you're doing this as a family, is there is a lot to um, look for in one single task without having him go so much further ahead than you are in the book. Yeah, but I, you just noticed that you did task 18 when we, and we did it for task whatever it was, uh, three. You, you, we, went, we scrolled through and went, oh, this is what we did. Right. So, so and how this works is um, that you're doing this on one particular. All right. So how Gatenya works is that you can do this however works for you guys. There's no, so I would have him, so there's a, the, 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 the particular thing of multiplying a single fraction by two halves or three thirds or four fourths. Um, you're only gonna have to do a couple of these and then you're gonna like, he's gonna be ready to move on to more stuff. And so I would stick with the same fraction that you guys are already working on and just extend those activities. And the way that I do it, because I, I don't follow the book because it never works for us. I mean, I do them because I have to write blog posts and that's why I follow the book. I do them like a couple times a week and I write blog posts, but I don't ever follow the book. And what it does is it lays down the kinds of activities you're going to do with your kids, right? It's just the kinds of activities, not this. I think of it not as specific activities. Gatenio says it doesn't matter. Other than in the first chapter where we're like trying to figure out the quantities of the rods, after that, it's like a free-for-all. You can do whatever you want. So the things that I do um, to extend any activity is we rename. Okay? We, um, we compare and contrast. We rename, and you're seeing all of this other stuff in here. Compare, contrast. If your kids are doing, no, so you can boil it all down to notice and wonder, right? If your kids are spending a lot of time noticing things, they're going to get to task 18 long before you get there in the book. The only reason they're there in the book, the way they are, is, is if, you, if you didn't get there on your own, they're going to force that on you. So he's, gonna, he's going to where we actually found something or I led you in a certain direction. Um, if you don't get there, then he's going to make you get there and make it hard for you not to see Which it. But it's really reliable and reassuring to know that you can go back and go, oh, okay, there's a there that I missed and I'll go back and find it. That's really right. Cool. And if you just work through and you say, oh, well, we're, I, I, we've already done stuff like this and we got there all on our own. All on our own, nobody had to tell us how to do this. We figured it out, right? Like your kids will just figure this out and they'll be fine. And what you, and what it'll do is fill in the gaps. If you go through the exercises, it'll fill in the gaps. But so you rename, you compare and contrast, you make predictions, um, you generalize. What can be generalized? What can be compared and contrasted? What is, what, what, what about this is similar to something you've already done? How is it different? Um, I have a whole thing somewhere. I will like see if I can find it. It's a parent thing, a notebooking page. And I pay attention to what my kids write down, to what my, well, what he writes down. I'm still writing. So it's not like I can ignore it. Um, but I'm still scribing for him mostly, but I'm paying attention to what he notices. And that's how I decide what we do tomorrow or what we do next week is based on the things that he notices, not something that's written in a book. 
So when, when, when Sonia, I'd really love another chat with you about that because that's where I think I'm not tracking where my kids are going. I think I'm not following them as fast as they need to go. I'm holding them back and they're losing some of the um, uh, excitement of it because I want to make sure. And if I'm maybe I'm not recording it in the way or maybe I'm not paying attention in the way that's useful and efficient. So maybe I need to learn another way. And if we can have another chat, Sonia, it might um, be the missing piece. <laughs> well, I think all of this, I mean, Lacey can probably, is she still here? She's not here. Yeah, sort of. I think she's got her mic off. Okay. I'm here. I'm here. Okay, Lacey, I think you kind of struggled with this as well. And right. um, like, what can you say about, like, what can you, because you have I, older kids. I don't know if I have the perfect answer. It, so... <laughs> For me, um, we s tend to stay around the same kind of concept, um, but with my older um, child who I do worry sometimes, just like you, that what if I'm holding him back? Um, oftentimes when I am working with a concept and I think that he's got it down, if I slightly change what I'm asking him to do, all of a sudden, I, he's, it manifests that he sort of kind of got the concept, but he, he, he could go deeper. And so what I usually do is I change, change it a little bit or I, um, I use larger numbers because if he can use – sometimes with kids, they can use the concept, the smaller numbers, really easy because they've memorized things. Um, but if you stretch them by making the number larger, then all of a sudden they can't rely on their memory of yep. math facts and they have to actually think about the structure more. Does that make sense? I guess that's what I was wondering about when and my comment was about you can't generalize task five quite the same as you could task three as easily because I hadn't wigged enough to do it off the top of my head. I had to work at it. So that was it, them extending me in that way. Maybe I just need to pay more attention. Yeah, I, um, I do. So when we spend a lot of time doing notice and wonder, we did yesterday, I think we did Monday. So we had a task come down and it was, um, let me show you what we did. Uh, remove the bars. Can you guys see this? Yeah. Okay, so this was like in book one. And um, Lacey has all these task cards for this stuff. And um, good grief. I can add some days. <laughs> okay, so we have something like this, right? And what do you notice about this? Well, like, come on, let go. <laughs> well, I'll just set it there. Well, let me let it go. All right. So, so there's, if, um, so my youngest, so in kindergarten, he would have written something like um, green plus dark, light green plus dark green equals blue. Um, dark green plus light green equals blue. The difference between, if we're going to, if we're going to exhaust this particular structure, then yeah. we might get a fraction out of it. I might get um, three ninths or six ninths. What? Go back. You said you exhaust it, and then you went, oh, we might get a fraction out of it. Well, what what fractions kind of things are you talking about? So what fractions I might get, like, I might get, he might say, well, um, green is three ninths of blue. I might get um, dark green is uh, six ninths of blue, um, you know, that kind of thing. But there's other things you can do. I can take the dark green. So there's a whole, there's like 12 or 13 things if you're using fractions, addition and subtraction if you do this. So you've got the obvious, 3 plus 6 equals 9, and 6 plus 3 equals 9, and the difference between, 3 equals the difference between uh, blue plus green, or 6, six minus 9, and 6 is the difference between uh, nine and three, but if I change them into fractions, right, now I have um, 
three ninths and six ninths that we can do those same addition and subtraction facts with, right? You can still do the same thing. So I can say the difference, or three ninths is the difference between um, one. I can do. I can either do one or I can do nine ninths and six ninths. And six ninths is the difference between one and um, three ninths. I'm doing this mentally, and I really don't do well. I have to see this stuff yeah, on no, paper. No, that's right. You've defined that. You've defined one as your. What is your one? You've defined one as your blue, though. So um, how do we avoid that? Well, because it's a ninth. If it's if it's white, it's a ninth. So that's your measuring rod, right? Is the three ninths. So blue is your measuring stick. So. Um, the, then the other thing you can do is talk about them in terms of the green, the light green, or the dark green. So then I would have uh, dark green is what of light green? Ooh. And then I also have light green is what of dark green, and then you have addition and subtractions even with the blue there again. You have four more. So now we're like up to like, what are we up, 16? Now we have 16 that we're working with. And so as we think about all of these, and they all still mean the same thing. Like we have, we have, we have a little one doing this, and then you have a teenager doing something else. And to, to change those in terms of talking about it in terms of the light green, it's the, the, the dark green's relationship to the light green, and the light green's relationship to dark green, but still both of their relationships to the blue, right? So I have and, a feeling you've talked over this with everyone else, and, and, and I missed it. Well, this was just Monday. So as we were going through the Gatenia 101, like, so how do we extend these, these, um, and that's, should be uploaded onto, right now, onto the replay page. Should be. I was uploading it at, like, noon. So, but if you have, um, so we have, the fractions that we could be working with are three-sixths. We could also be working with six-thirds. We could be working with three ninths. We can be working with one half. We can working with um, two, because <laughs> basically there are two light greens in in the um, the dark green. But it's so you got six thirds, which is two. But you can also just use two. So there's all kinds of ways that we can be working on that and understanding that they all mean the same thing. Yeah. Well, maybe with my technology up to date, I might actually be able to keep up with the posts. There you go. Thank you so much. I'm not promising my technology is getting up to date. <laughs> <laughs> you know how long it's taken me to actually join this group? <laughs> but I have, I'm looking at my internet right now and I have two bars, two bars. We'll see how this goes. And I have the highest. This is so funny, and Andrea laughs, right? I have the highest internet I can get, the highest, the fastest internet we can get, and I have currently two bars, and um, that's how good my wireless reception is, and it has nothing to do with me. It has to do with the signal that is, um, it's not our, our soft, it's not our technology, it is just the way currently things are going. I anyway, my problem is just um, me. I put some other disable function on my com other computer and I just haven't been able to figure out what I turned off to fix it again. So, <laughs> I have. Now I've got I, an echo. I think both of them are working for some reason. I have sympathy for you. I do this. I hate. I, hate, I have a love hate relationship with technology. Okay. So I have a question, another question that's not related to just this bit here, just because I'm spinning out here. Now, how it, you've got your camera on you, yes. and you've got your screen share going on. Can the camera, if I was to do this for myself, I'd want the camera on either either my notepad or or, or a whiteboard or or um, the blocks themselves. Or no, well, I can't because I've got the screen there, and I can use that app. But the so I'd need an actual camera that I can just like turn somewhere else. Eh? Do that up. Yeah, I can turn my camera wherever I want. 
You can put that on a whiteboard. You can put it on a whiteboard. Because I'm just thinking how to bring this to a friend of mine who's like miles and miles and miles and miles and miles away. So I use Zoom. And you can get... Yeah, it's quite cool. Yeah, so you can do in Zoom. So this is, we're just talking text. You guys can hang out or leave. Um, <laughs> so right. I, I'm in Zoom and I have, um, and you could do it in Skype too. You could do it in Google and you just screen share. But so I quite like the, the screen sharing, but I quite like that you've got that, the Cusineer rods there. And I, I really like that. That's something new for me. But the, the fact that I'm looking at your face is lovely. And it's, it's great that I'm on show, but I'd probably want to be anonymous <laughs> next to a screen that I can r record stuff. And, and well, you can do that if you aim it like right at your, like right at your, like, so if I did this, you can see what I was writing, yeah. but you can so also, um, I because I, I can't type my answers and can't manipulate the, um, the, the app with the, the rob thing <laughs> great language yeah so i would i tried doing this in in um word and typing it out and that was really painful but it did kind of work but it was painful because you have to try and get the um app to work right and get the symbols right so on a whiteboard it would be better well but and, and then i would have to store one and then if you're they're going to see you in front of a whiteboard so there's no way you're going to get rid of that Unless you actually have it on your screen, but then I have a hard time writing on a screen. Like, like if you have like a Wacom pen tablet or a tablet and you're just drawing on the screen, that's really hard for me. But if you can make it work, but no, I use Zoom. I'm just trying to figure out a way and then to record those. Um, Cause if the camera's on that, then theoretically whatever is written on that whiteboard, should be going into the recording because it's got it's recording yes what all of this is being recorded so this everything that's up here that you see going on here is recorded yeah but the, um i mean but the stuff that of us in the background is they're also recorded. recorded so theoretically anything that's shown to the camera will also be recorded and the voice that goes with it yes so i'm just trying to think how this is gonna Bit slow. Sorry, I haven't had breakfast or coffee. She needs some or coffee. <laughs> okay. Um, and then just need to stop for a minute and process. Rachel okay. needs a consultation, Sonia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's your face, Sonia? <laughs> Well, I don't actually, I'm not particularly good at this, so I, you know. Oh, no, you are. I think, um, yeah, the, this is the easiest way I've found to do the rods, these little apps. The thing that's a problem with it is that you can, you're limited in your space. There's only so much you can build. Well, no, my son built, um, the other one, he was doing 24 over 18, task four, and he was just going off on his screen and it was fine. Right, but if you want to build long trains, you can't. Build really long trains. So for this particular thing, it's fine. But if you want to build really big things and stuff like that, you can't in here because you're limited. I mean, like you can only go as far as this goes across. That's it. Yeah, so, fair so, um, so I would like a bigger screen, but you don't use it most of the time. You know, you just use smaller rods then, but that you, people get the point. Yeah, no, I'm, 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 thank you so much for doing this. <laughs> You're welcome. I like talking math and I like seeing math, so this just puts some stuff in my brain, um, makes it possible. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm a math geek, but for some reason, not all my kids are math geeks. For some reason. <laughs> Well, I, I we are we are we are all turning into math geeks at my house. Not math geeks, but we all love math now, now, and it's fun. Now, so, all right, Thank ladies. You, well, I have little kids that are screaming and need. Um, I am sure need assistance. 
Um, <laughs> there's three of them here now, and they're entertaining themselves with my door shut, so it's probably a bad idea. Um, so I will need to let you go, and thank you all for coming, and we will see you Wednesday or Monday, okay. whenever you want right. to come. All right, all right. bye. Okay, bye. Thank you, Sonia. Bye. bye. bye.